Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kintone Technical Training. I'm Leo, and I will be going through the technical parts about Kintone. Today, we'll be covering on RESTful API. This material was created using the October 2020 versions of Kintone. We may change our contents without prior notice. Before you start, make sure you have a Kintone account with Kintone Administrator's privilege in your account. You have the understanding of some programming languages. In this tutorial, we'll be using JavaScript. You install Google Chrome and Visual Studio Code. You install REST Client, which is an extension in Visual Studio Code, to your Visual Studio Code environment. You've downloaded the app template. This app template has company list and sales deals app in it. Make sure you import it to your subdomain. You can find the link in the description area below. Here's the agenda for our training today. First, we will be covering how to enhance Kintone usability. Then, we will get a deep dive with Kintone RESTful API which includes introductions to different request methods in RESTful API, as well as going over some examples. Last, we will do some hands-on together. We will create apps from API, and we will add records from API. How do we enhance Kintone usability? Before we start, I wanted to remind you what Kintone is. It is a visual software builder which allows you to create database via drag and drop. There are many robust features in Kintone, but we will be focusing on the three pillars of Kintone, which are process management, storing data, and communication. Here are some popular use cases when a user will want to consider adding some additional enhancement in Kintone. Data generation, such as bulk input, iterative data. Data update, such as bulk updates or batch processing. Data export, such as exporting it to Excel or CSV into a different format. Data input assistant, such as validation, automatic numbering, or conditional format. Data search, filtering, or searching. Views, such as aggregation, chart, graph, calendar, scheduler, timesheet, map, or even mobile. Last, integration with other service to create things like invoices for accounting, project management, or writing email from Kintel. After you master today's training, you should be able to handle most, if not all, of all we mentioned here. Here's a typical roadmap for someone who uses Kintone and how to gradually enhance the system to satisfy their needs. Step one, you create your apps using the native feature. Step two, you add extensions such as plugins, or connected services. Step three, you use integrations such as iPaaS, EAI, or ETL. Last, you might add some customization via coding. There are two major tools that are offering Kintone for enhancement via the Kintone JavaScript API and the Kintone RESTful API. Let's see a breakdown of what are generally used for RESTful API and the JavaScript API. If you want to customize the views, generally speaking, you will use Kintone's JavaScript API. Whereas if you are thinking about doing data, process management, communications, app records, app settings, those are good use cases with Kintone RESTful API. There's one additional popular API, which allows you to find or to manipulate user department information into your subdomain, 
This is the user API, but we will not be covering this uh, API today. Kinton RESTful API. Before we begin, let's review what are typical APIs you can use. API has primarily of four different functions. Get for getting the record. Post for creating new records. Put for updating existing records. Delete for deleting records. Kintone's API will be offering all four of the above action. Let's go over the most popular API that are being used in Kintone development. The app records, the app settings, the comments, and spaces. Please find the link for a complete list of the API that are offered in Kintone on the right hand side below. Just to recap, we will not be covering comments and space in today's tutorial. Instead, we will do some deep dive with the RESTful API for app records and app settings. You will need to pass four required parameters when using Kintone RESTful API. First, the URL. Depending on what you're trying to do, a different URL needs to be used. Second, method. What method of action are you trying to do? Again, there's only four choices you can select, whether it's get, post, put, or delete. Third, you need to define headers. Depending on what the action you're trying to do, you will need to define the content type and the authorization information, such as your API token or your user authentication. Fourth, you need to pass a body. You can include additional adjustment to your API codes here inside your body. You can pass text data in JSON format or binary data in blob. If you're trying to get records, you pass a query so that Kingdom will return records matching to the specific query. Or if you want to add or update records, you can pass Kintone the values to add or the values to update inside the body. Here are some additional important information about Kintone's RESTful API. First, Kintone is using HTTPS as a protocol, which means your API requests are encrypted. Kintone only accepts the data format of JSON. And the default character encoding is UTF-8. There are three types of accessible authentications you can use. The user password authentication, the API token authentication, and the session authentication. In the request header, you will need to include your host information, the content type, and the authentication. Remember, if you are on Kintone.com, you use Kintone.com in your host, whereas if your domain is Cybozoo.com, you will use Cybozoo.com in your host. Last but not least, request URI. The request URI varies depending on what API you want to use. Please keep in mind that the URI are significantly different for guest space in Kintone. Authentication is needed regardless of what RESTful API you use. If you want to use the password authentication, your key in the header is x cybozoo authorization followed by a base64 encode. I will show you how to find the values later in this tutorial. Remember, if you use the password authentication, you would only have access to the data that is permitted to this user password pair. You can also use the API token authentication, which can be set inside each app. You will need a different API token for each app that you use. You can also use the session authentication. It is less common, but definitely comes in handy for additional security. 
We will not be covering the session authentication in depth today, but you can find out more detail of these authentications in the given link of this slide. Request method for Kingtone RESTful API. There are many ways where you can request RESTful APIs. You can do curl, you can do Kingtone REST API request using Kingtone.API method. You can use the XML HTTP request, which is also referring to XHR method. You can use the fetch API method you can use the REST client, which is an extension in Visual Studio Code. You can use the Advanced RESTful client, which is an extension offered by Google Chrome. Last but not least, you can use the Postman. If you are familiar with the command line tools, you can use curl for transferring data The Kingtone RESTful API request can be used inside the depth tool of your Chrome browser. It is very convenient and recommended for users who are just getting started. The XML HTTP request is another popular method of approach. Especially for users who are not familiar with the asynchronous behavior of JavaScript, However, please make sure you understand the consequences when using this method of approach. While executing, it will cause the screen to be unresponsive until the request is finished and may no longer be supported in major browsers. These may not provide your user with the best experience they can have. The fetch API method is another common method available, similar to XML HTTP request. Note that you cannot use this one on Internet Explorer browsers. If you use VS Code for your project, you are recommended to try this extension, the REST client. I will be using this method during the demo today to show you how to use Kingtone's RESTful APIs. In addition, Google Chrome's extension with Advanced REST API to do test out for Kingtone's RESTful API. I will also do a little bit of demo using this Advanced REST client today. Last but not least, you can also choose to use Postman to test Kingtone RESTful API method. Since there are already a tons of tutorial available online, I will not be using this today. But this, indeed, is one of my favorite tool when testing out APIs. Request example of Kingtone REST API. Make sure you follow the instruction provided in the beginning of this tutorial to install the template apps used for this demo. Let's navigate to the company list app and we will create two test records. I will now go to my screen. So first of all, I want to make sure that I install these apps. I will go and create apps. Because I already have the template file, I will just click create from template. This is the template that we use for this tutorial. So now you see the company list and sales deals apps are imported into your space. Let me create two new records inside company list. The first record, I'll name it Intel. I'll select a company type of startup. Industry will be software and internet. I'll click save. I'll create just another record for CyberZoo. Company type, I'll choose Enterprise. Industry, we'll do Software and Internet. I'll click Save. All 
right. So now that we have two records available, let's make sure you install the REST client and Visual Studio Code extension. Because I already installed the REST client extension, I'm currently shown as uh, the only options I have are disable or uninstall. But please go ahead and install this extension. Next, you want to open your example for records.http. So over here, everything is almost set for you. We will just need to replace the domain, the app ID, the API token for uh, the Cell Steals app, and the company list app. Let me show you where you can get these. If I go back to my Kingtone screen, This is your subdomain. Everything up until before .kingtone.com. So I will copy this and I'll replace your subdomain. The app ID, this is the sales deals app ID. So I will navigate to my sales deals app. And the app ID is the number right after K slash. In this case, it is 15. The API token one, that's my Cell Steals app API token. So I will go back to my Cell Steals app one more time. I will click on the setting bar. I'll scroll down to customization and integration, and I will select API token. You will hit this generate button to generate your API token. You can choose what method is can be tied, what actions of method can be tied to this API token. In this case, I will make sure that the user has all four actions. I will select the API token. I will copy this. Before it becomes effective, please make sure you click save and you update the app. And now I'll go back to my Visual Studio and I'll paste that API token. Last but not least, the API token for your company list app. So we'll use the same approach. We'll go back to the company list app and we'll click customization and integration. We'll select API token. We'll hit generate. We'll make sure all the actions are checked off. And I will select the API token, copy that, click save click update my app and I'll paste it over here. Now, let me briefly explain uh, what these are. So the method is list beforehand and this is the URL that's needed to tell the API where that it needs to go in order to get the records. When you are trying to get records, you'll pass a query. In that query, you'll tell Kingtone which app ID that you're trying to get data from. And then you'll pass the authorization method 
In this case, we're using the API token, so it's over here. Now let's click send request. When you click send request, a response window will open up. You'll see the status is 200. That means your code is success. And if you scroll down, you'll find that you got an object with no records uh, and an empty array. That's because I don't have any records at this moment. Let's create some records using the, uh, the APIs here. So, if I click post, let's go over what this post is. The post method, as mentioned before, is to create new records. I will use this URL to create new records. And in this case, I am passing two API token. That is because I'm not only adding records in the sales deals app, I'm also getting data from the company list app. The content type is application slash JSON. And because I'm trying to add new records in it, I will need to make sure I can include bodies in my request. The body structure looks like this. App, you would need to specify what app ID are you trying to add records into. And then you'll have a record object. This is an array and an array of objects and each object represents a record. In this case, I'm trying to create two records. The first record would have its name, Kington, and the deal name is Kington App Creation. With the wrap uh, assignee assigned to it. Same thing here, my second record would use the CyberZoo and the deal name is Kintong JavaScript Customization. Now, before I continue, I wanted to make sure that I'm getting, I'm entering my user code into it. So, I will first create a user code variable. And then I'll go to Kintong to find out what my user code is. I will right click. Click inspect. I will use Kintone's JavaScript method, login user. This is telling you who is currently logged in, and that's me, the developer. So the code is developer. I will copy this code over here. And I will change this line of code to put user code. I'll do the same, same thing below over here. So let's click post. If I scroll down, you'll see IDs 1 and 2, revisions 1 and 2. The ID means you just create a new record and you assign an ID or Kintone assigns an ID to each record. In this case, because I didn't have any records, so my new record starts with 1 and 2 because I created two records. And the revision is 1 for record 1 one for record two. Let's see what it is inside Kintel. So let me go to the sales deals app. And now you see two records has been created with the deal name, Kintel app creation, Kintel JavaScript customization, 
and their rap is developer. So, we'll go to our next one. Well, again, just to make sure that you replace uh, the, the link kinton.com with cybozo.com if your domain ends with cybozo.com. You do not have to include the type, the field type inside your post and put method. And we just replace our user code in our environment. We explain the revision and the IDs as a successful response when posting new records. Those are the math fields. So inside the company name search, because we type King Tone, it puts King Tone onto the spot. Now, remember when we first did the testing for get request, it shows nothing but an empty array. Let's give it a try one more time. And this time, you should, you should be able to see new records coming up. So here, I have the records. And you'll notice that I have more things than I, than, I, uh, than I needed. And that's because your app has more fields than we have defined. But with the company name search, you can see that we have the Cybo Zoo for the second record. And if we scroll further down, I probably missed that. You're probably shouting in front of your computer monitor. Is, there it is. There you go. So that's my first value. Uh, my company name search field value in my first record, which is Kinta. Fantastic. Again, this is when you get records. Uh, this is what it looked like in your response window. Just remember that this whole thing itself is a field object. A field object has a type. In this case, we're looking at a number field and it has a value of a hundred thousands in it. Now, please make sure uh, when you use different types of formats of fields, you define those types and you can find more information using the link provided in the slide here. So now you have saw how I used the REST client on VS Code to make a RESTful API calls with Kingtone. I strongly recommend to try the REST on your own. If you don't have VS Code Editor, you can also try to use Chrome extension. Please skip this session if you want to start the hands-on. The Chrome extension events REST client. In this example, we'll use the method get and we'll pass the request URL and we will provide the API token authentication information to get the data. So, let me go to Chrome. I will type events, rest client. I'll select this link here. And if you didn't install this app, you, it will show as install and you will need to install it. If you already installed the app, 
which is what I have done, it shows launch app, and I'm going to click on this. You'll see a separate window being opened, such as this. And over here, we would pass all the necessary information that we need in order to test this out. So, what I'm going to do is, I will just copy the URL that I have over here. So, close this one. This is my URL, so I'll paste this and I will replace the domain name with technical team tone training. You can find the this part of the URL at the top. The app ID in this case is 15, which is also in your URL. The header, remember that we are using the X Cybozu API token. So I'll copy the header name here. And the header value is, I believe it's the first one, which is for the self steel tab. Let's send this request and see what we will get for return. Ah, you're probably shouting in front of the screen telling me that I missed something in my URL. And you're right. Kingdom.com got erased for some reason. So let's give it a try one more time. Okay. Technical King Kintone training. Let me just make sure all my links are correct. There you go. All right. Now you see the request is being pulled and we have our first, our second record, which has the field value of Cybozoo. And if we scroll further down, I think we're able to find our first record value, which is Kingdom. All right. So this is how you would use Advanced RESTful client in Chrome extension. Let's go back to the slide. Again, even if you're using the Vance REST client, you can still see the field object, which includes the field type and the field value in it. You can try other methods such as creating two new records using the same methodology of approach in here. Just remember the URL is important. As you see from my demo, uh, because I used the wrong URL, I was not able to get the records that I wanted to see. And just remember, if you're using POST, if you're trying to create new records or update existing records in Kingtone, you do not have to include the type information. All you have to do is include the value and the field code. As a response, you should be able to see your new IDs 
and revision number. All right, let's do some hands-on. So just remember uh, if you installed the app template correctly, you should have a company list app. And in this company list, there's uh, field codes in this app. And you can see those field codes here. The important one being the company name, which is something that we will be using uh, very often in this in this hands-on. Now, first thing first, we want to make sure this company name is set as unique. So I believe the template itself has already set the company name field as unique. But you might want to double check by going back to the company list, clicking on the gear icon, click form, hover over to company name where you see another small gear icon shows up. You click on the setting and make sure you have prohibit duplicate value checked. This is because we're going to use the company name as the key value when we are trying to get data or when we're trying to assign data from other records to find the data from company list. Create app from API. So, what we're trying to do here is we want to create a third app called contact log using the APIs here. Here are the step-by-step -step of what we need to do before we can create a contact log app from API. First, we will need to add a preview app. Because we're trying to add new app, in this case, we're using this method post. And that's the URL you're looking at. Post, um, sorry. So after post slash K slash V1 slash preview slash app. The second step is you want to update the general setting of this app. And because we already created an app, so this time we want to update it. And that's why we're using this method put. And the URL is slash, slash preview slash app slash settings. The third one is we want to add form fields. And because we're trying to add something, we're using post method. And the URL is slash preview slash app slash form slash fields. The fourth one is we're trying to update the form layout. So we're trying to update and that's why we're using this put method with the URL slash preview slash app slash form slash layout. The fifth step is we want to update views. Again, the keyword is update. So we are using this method put with the URL slash preview slash app slash views. And then at the end, we want to deploy app setting. When you deploy app setting, this means you're adding your new app into your subdomain. And thus, in this case, we're using this method post and the URL is slash preview slash app slash deploy. Now, all these URLs are different RESTful API URLs that you can use in Kingtone. But those are not all. You, there's definitely more URLs, more APIs that you can operate. So before we start, let's make sure we have everything that we need. Make sure you have a Kingtone account with administrator's uh, privilege. This is because if you don't have a administrator, uh, administrator's privilege, you would not be able to create a new app. 
we'll also need to find out the base 64 your Kintang user account ID password combination in order to use uh, these API. The easiest way to get your base 64 encoded string is using the BTOA method, which is a JavaScript method that allows the user to create base 64 encoded string. Let's go to your dev tool in Google Chrome. I right click, click inspect. I'll go to the console tab and I'll click BTOA. That's a method that we're using. Parentheses, single quotation mark. You can also use double quotation mark. Just make sure if you're using double quotation, you close with the double quotation. In this case, I'm using a developer account. So I'll type developer account. That is my user name or my user code. I'll type column and my password. So my password is developer64. I'll close it with the single quotation mark and the parentheses. So my column is always needed at the end. Now when I click enter, you'll see this streamline of code and that's your base 64. So let's fill in the information that we have. Again, we'll go to VS Code and we'll open up my hands-on file. The subdomain Again, that's what your subdomain address is. So that's my kingtone dash training dash sorry kingtone dash technical dash training. And I'll just replace your subdomain with that part. Your authentication. So this is what you just have. Your base 64. And I'll make sure that I have it down there. Your company list app ID. Again, the company list app ID, you need to click company list. And you notice this little number behind slash K slash. And that is your app ID. So my app ID for company list is 16. You may have a different one, so please make sure you use yours. And then the contact log app name, because we're trying to create an app called contact log. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now, don't worry about the six, uh, the contact log app ID, because we don't have it just yet. Now I'm going to click, or I'm going to save this file and I'm going to click send request. When I do that, notice there's a 200, which means this code was successful. If I scroll down, you'll see that I just created an app called 17. So I'll copy this number and I'll replace that over here, your contact log app ID. Before I go to the next step, let me just show you where the app is in Kingtone. If I go to the gear icon setting, the one at the very top, I can click app management. And you'll see a contact log app with the status of not activated yet. The day is today. 1024, 1024. What we want to do is we will click change settings, which is the gear icon over here. This will take us to this app, which is not yet available for 
any other people, any other users to assets. Don't click activate app just yet because we're going to do everything using API calls. So let's see what our next step is. Let me go back to my slide. Right, so we explain what the domain is. We explain uh, the, how to get the authorization token. We explain how to get the company app ID. And we just did the send request and we got our app ID and we replaced that with line six. And we check what the app management, we were able to open our unactivated app in Kintone. All right, so the next one is we will click, we'll go back to our VS Code. And I will scroll down to do something more. So we just created a preview app. And the next thing we want to do is we wanted to change the icon of this app. So notice this icon is currently uh, showing as a hamburger icon. And when we click send request, you'll see this revision number is now three. And if I go back to this preview app, if I hit refresh, you'll notice this icon is now changed. Let's go to the next step. So our next step is we want to add some fields into this app. Right now, we don't have anything just yet. We can add those fields by using a different URL. And we will use the post method request. So when we click send request, you'll see that now the revision number is four. That means our app has been updated successfully. And if we go back to the app, refresh the page, you'll see now there are fields in this app. Let's do some more. I wanted to make sure those fields are configured in a way that is best for the user. For example, the details is where users will enter a lot of information, but this field input is too small for me. So what I will do is I wanted to make sure that I change, I change the layout to make sure it looks the way that I wanted to go for. So if I go further down, you'll see that I'm using this layout API and I'm using the put method to update my fields that are there. So when I click send request, notice that now the revision is five. And if I go back to my app, if I refresh this page, much better. Now we have a bigger place to write in details and everything else looks more uh, user friendly. Okay, so what do we want to do next? Well, we wanted to include some new views in, in, this, um, in this app. Before we go to the next one, you can pause the video here and you can try the rest out on your own. You can come back to this video once you go through step five, six, and seven. Just kidding, there's no seven.
Ready? All right, so let's do the next thing. I'll further scroll down. And just looking at this URL here, we wanted to create some new views. The views are very useful in Kingtown because sometimes you may have a lot of fields and you want to, or more like your users, they might want to see different fields in the same app. So accounting people wants to see things like pricing. The sales team members may just care about the company name, the date when this deal is going to get closed or will be closed, so on and so forth. So we wanted to create different views for different users, different groups, for different purposes. In here, we wanted to create a view that is called my list and we want it to be sorted by date in the descending order. And even though we have more than five fields, but we want to just display all these five fields, the date, the company name, the type, the detail, and the attachment. Let's click send. So now we just created a view with the ID 594-8295 and our app revision number now comes up to six. I will refresh my app. Now you see a new view is being created over here, which is named my list. I'll go into the edit just to demonstrate you where the uh, where the fields are. So remember, we wanted to display the date, the company name, the type, details, and attachment. There it is. And if we scroll down, we also we also uh, I, we also clarify that we wanted it to sort by date in the descending order. All right, it looks like we have everything ready, so I would like to deploy this app. I'll click send request. And now there's no, I got an empty object in the response, but if I scroll up, it says uh, the status code is 200 and it says okay. That means I pretty much succeed in creating a new app. Let's make sure we did successfully create this app. You can see it by going back to the setting and instead of activate the app, it now becomes the update app in the gray button. That means you already activate this app. So if I click contact log, now your app is ready with your new view, my list and the fields that you assign into this view. Great, so we just created a new app using API. Now, our next step is we want to add a new record using the API. So let's go back to this file. And if you scroll down, what we want to do is we want to add a new record here. And before we do that, we want to make sure that this record has an attachment file in it. Now, just keep in mind that adding a new record and adding an attachment file is actually two different process. You will need to use a slightly different API. You will need to use a different method, um, different methodologies of approach in order to add an attachment file. Uh, whereas it's actually more straightforward for just adding records. So we'll try, we'll start by adding the file itself. First of all, 
if you download the file from your GitHub, there should be a file called kingtone.jpg in it. Please make sure your kingtone.jpg is in the same folder as where the hands-on.http is. So I will click send request. Now this first send request allows me to send my file or upload my file into Kingtone into this URL file.json. What you will get as a response is a file key pair and you will copy this line of string. Sorry, I have a big arrow blocking over here. I'm not sure if you can see it from the video, but uh, I had to move down um, the screen a little bit so that I can see the whole thing. So I just copy and paste the file key. I will go back to my file. I'll scroll further down to where it says post slash record. I will scroll down and replace this file key values here. Replace. So there is one thing that I also want to change. Remember that we have we created two record, one for Kintone, one for Cybozoo. But we don't have a company record that is Java, so I'm going to replace this value with Kintone. I'll save this file. And now I'll click send request. Now you see, remember that if it's a successful adding record, we'll, we'll get the ID name as uh, the value of the ID as a return response. And our revision for that record is starting at one. This means we succeeded in creating a new record in Kingtone app. Let's go to Kingtone and see if we actually created this record. So I will refresh this page. Ah, now you see I created a new record with company name Kingtone, the type is visit, and with the attachment, which is the kingtone.jpg file. And the date is October 19th. Great. So we just created a record in Kingtown using the API. Now, again, this is all for today's training. Great job, everyone, for staying until the end of this session. And thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoy development in Kingtown. As a recap, please find references uh, URL that I have used for this training in this slide. Again, I'm Leo and I look forward to see you in our next training. Thank you.